An apocalypse caused by dark energy is a slow and agonizing one. Isolation, loneliness, and emptiness. A slow fade to black. The cosmological constant doesn't quite end the universe, rather, it ends everything within it. Once it begins, the accelerated expansion never ends. How will the universe end? In this multi-part series, I'll explain one of the most likely and arguably the most likely scenario, heat death. In addition to how heat death can lead to the birth of a new universe, perhaps one precisely the same as ours. Don't worry, we'll get to all that and much more throughout this series. To understand all the complexities of heat death, there are quite a few mind-bending concepts that I'll set the stage with. Last episode, I explained why the universe is not only expanding, but actually accelerating in its rate of expansion. Well, today's topic is even more insane. A topic that contradicts reality as you know it. The vast observable universe as you know it is in fact bigger than you think. That observable part that refers to the area within our particle horizon. This is the farthest we could possibly see with our most advanced instruments. This is due to the limitations of the speed of light as well as the actual age of the universe. While extremely fast, light of course does take time to travel. Therefore, from our point of view, farther objects are also farther in the past. Hence, there also must be a distance that corresponds corresponds with the beginning of time itself. Some distance where if light started there at the very first instant, it would take the entire age of the universe to reach us. This is what defines the particle horizon. It is the farthest we could observe anything. Given that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, you might think that this means the particle horizon must be a sphere of radius 13.8 billion light years. However, that would only be under the assumption that the universe was static. As we've already established in the prior episode, as well as this video, present day evidence suggests that the universe is dynamic. It is in fact expanding and accelerating in expansion. Throughout the entire age of the universe, it has been expanding, whether it was the cosmic inflation at one point causing the majority, and it then passing the ball on to dark energy six billion years ago to continue, it's been expanding this entire time nonetheless. Therefore, something close enough to send its light to us 13.8 billion years ago is now over 45 billion light years away due to expansion. Hence, the observable universe can be considered as a sphere of about 45 billion light years in radius centered on us. The closest we could get to actually seeing this edge is the cosmic microwave background, that of which you might recall from this video right here. It played a key role in verifying the claims of the Big Bang Theory when it was first discovered. But here's where things get really mind-blowing. We could also see galaxies which are now over 30 billion light years away, much closer than the edge of the particle horizon. Now, the light from those galaxies began traveling towards us long before the galaxies themselves reached such vast distances. Instances. If this was not the case, the light coming from them would not have sufficient time to reach us. You see, since our universe is expanding and accelerating in expansion, more distant objects are receding more quickly. Hence, there is a distance where the speed of the object, such as a galaxy, is moving away faster than the speed of light. In other words, the speed of light can't quite catch up with the speed at which the object is moving away from us. Now, hold on. I know what you're thinking. Nothing can move faster than light, right? Yes, that is true, but there is no limit to which objects in space can happen to find themselves farther apart since they too are sitting in space, which is getting bigger and bigger in between them. It is the expansion of space itself in between which is faster than light, not the galaxy moving away. The discrepancy between this speed of expansion of space between objects is actually pretty close to the speed of light. Nonetheless, it is still faster than the speed of light. Okay, so how are we even able to see objects in space that are so far away that have been receding away faster than the speed of light? Well, you see, the light left the source of the object, such as a galaxy, very, very long ago, before the many years of expansion. It left this source so long ago that the universe was significantly smaller and thus had less distance to cover, despite the continuing expansion. Hence, eventually, it was able to catch up, for lack of a better word. As the expansion slowed, it reached a part of the universe that was so close that the recession speed was then less than speed of light. It entered our Hubble radius from the outside, as Katie Mack, the author of The End of Everything, puts it. Confused? Don't worry, here's a very simple analogy to help you better understand this. Imagine you are standing on a huge treadmill that is moving faster than the speed you could run at, at your top speed. Despite running at your best 
top speed, you will still be moving backwards little by little. However, if you manage to stay fast enough where you don't quite fall off the treadmill, perhaps the treadmill begins to slow down due to a bad motor, then you could finally catch up to the front again. And then finally, as you see in the last image here, despite initially falling behind, as the treadmill slows down, you could finally catch up and reach your destination. So hypothetically, if you are in a universe whose expansion is slowing down, you'll be able to see more and more distant objects as time goes on. Well, that's cool and all, but unfortunately, that's not our universe. Dark energy ruins all the fun since our expansion is accelerating, not slowing down. For the past 6 billion years, it's been accelerating in expansion ever since cosmic inflation handed the ball off to dark energy, as you might recall from the chart in the prior episode. So while the Hubble radius is actually growing in size, it's not growing fast enough. In fact, it's growing so slowly that we're actually losing visible objects that we once could see before. And as as it grows, we don't see anything new. We're only getting back what we lost due to the expansion. In fact, eventually, no galaxies aside from just one of them will be visible. The only one that will be visible is the one that is moving towards us since it's close enough where gravity is strong enough to counter the expansion, that is Andromeda. The same galaxy will have collided with our own. If you notice, Andromeda is a different color than the many other galaxies out there. This is due to redshifting, something perhaps I'll make a full video on. But wait, things get even stranger. Remember, I said there comes a point in space where the farther an object is, the larger it will actually appear, contradicting reality as we know it? Well, here we go. For a very long distance in space, things do indeed appear smaller the farther they are away from us. However, there does come a point where this relationship reverses. This is great for astronomers because it allows them to easily view very, very far objects since they appear larger than they actually are. Now, the reason for this reversal is similar to the reason why we could see things that are moving away from us faster than light. In the past, when the light emitted from them, they were much closer to us. Despite them being much farther away currently, the light they sent us has been already traveling all this time, and it's just reaching us now, showing us an image of something that used to be much closer than it actually is in reality. The farther back in time you go, the smaller the universe was, meaning less distance to travel. Now, this is certainly fascinating, the fact that it seems to contradict reality as we know it. Unfortunately, though, this means very, very bad news for the future of the universe, that of which we'll be exploring in the next episode. So, make sure you do subscribe and enable post notifications, this way you don't miss out on it. Anyway, I hope you guys found this intriguing. If so, feel free to share it with a friend, especially if they're drunk. I promise the look on their face will be priceless. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed, or perhaps if you learned a thing or two. I'll leave the link for The End of Everything by Katie Mack in the description for those interested in reading it. I do highly suggest it. With that said, though, have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay skeptical, stay curious, and until next time.